Jesus' name. Amen. You may have your seats. Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Exodus chapter 35. Uh, I am not from Lagos. I'm from Bunyore. Bunyore is somewhere in Luanda. That's where I come from. <clears throat> Exodus chapter 35 verse 20. Uh, the Bible says, and all the congregation of the children of Israel departed from the presence of Moses, verse 21, and everyone came, everyone came whose heart was stirred. So these scriptures talk about uh, the giving that the children of Israel had to give uh, concerning the building of the tabernacle. Uh, before I, I forget, I came with two of my sons, Moses and uh, Leo. Why don't you just stand and wave? These are my sons, Moses <clears throat> and Leo. <clears throat> God bless you. Uh, so, everyone whose heart was Stirred, and everyone whose spirit was willing, and they brought the Lord's offering for the work of the tabernacle of meeting for all its service and for its holy people. One of, my, one of the subjects that is normally very close to my heart, very close, is the subject of giving. It's very close to my heart. <clears throat> and it's unfortunate that in our day and time, uh, giving is one of the things that have been very much abused, and you, you all know that. And so many times, every time a preacher stands up and mentions the word giving, uh, it stands up different emotions and feelings in the minds of people. Because some people have had very bad experiences in churches, or even in the hands of preachers, where matters giving is concerned. But then that doesn't negate the fact that giving is biblical and is of God and is the right thing to do. And that is how God has designed that uh, his kingdom here on earth may be established. Giving is one of the ways we establish the kingdom of God. And it's, it's an, it's, it's, it goes right from Genesis chapter 4. Uh, that's, a, that's one of the first places where you see uh, people offering unto the Lord. And uh, Cain offered. Abel offered. And you see God responding to their offering. So God's mind is where people are giving. And so that's what the Bible says. That unto Abel and his offering, God had respect. What that simply means is he accepted the offering. A Cain and his offering, God did not respect it. In other words, he rejected the offering. And so, uh, the whole idea about giving is as far back as Genesis, where you see God acknowledging a man's offering and rejecting a man's offering. And so, Abel offering accepted Cain offering rejected because this is a tricky bit about giving when you give the church is going to receive your offering but I don't know if God receives that offering that's a different thing church will just receive okay because they we may not really know some things about your giving and so here when they were giving there are two things that I want to share with us. Uh, if you open your heart, uh, you're going to get something. Look at your neighbor one more time and tell them the guest is not new. He has been here before. We know him. Tell your neighbor we know him. We have checked him out. We know who he is. So, so just receive. Amen. <laughs> yeah, tell your neighbor relax and receive. All that work you're thinking about, your pastor has done all that work. Interview, vetting, all those background checks, he has done. And so by the time he's giving the preacher the microphone, tell your neighbor, receive now. 
Are you ready to receive? There are two things that are important when it comes to giving. Two things important when it comes to giving. The Bible says when they were giving, like we are about to do today, into the building of the tabernacle, they came, the Bible says, whose heart was stirred. And then whose spirit was willing. They brought the Lord's offering for the work of the tabernacle of the meeting. They had stirred, stirred hearts and willing hearts. And the Bible continues to say this in verse 22. And they came, verse 22, both men and women, as many as had a willing heart. And they brought earrings, nose rings, rings, necklaces, jewelry of gold, not gold plated. That is everyone who's made an offering of gold to the Lord. And so they came and says in verse 23, every man with whom was found blue, purple, and scarlet thread, linen, goat's hair, red skin of rams, uh, badger skins brought them. Verse 24, it says like this, and everyone did offer or brought an offering of silver and, and, and bronze, and they brought the Lord's offering. And everyone with whom was found acacia wood for any work of the service, they did what? They brought it. Verse 25, and all the women whose hearts, all the women who, that were gifted artisans, span yarn with their hands and brought what they had spun of blue, purple, scarlet, and fine linen. Verse 26, and all the women whose hearts starred with wisdom span yards of God's hair. I want us to jump to verse 23, uh, verse 29, as we uh, finish our reading. And it says like this, and the children of Israel brought a freewill offering to the Lord. All the men and, and the women whose hearts were willing to bring material for all kinds of work, which the Lord, by the hand of Moses, had commanded. Now, if you want to really understand biblical giving, uh, where God's work is concerned, these are some of the scriptures that can really help to understand how we ought to give. We give out of stirred hearts and willing spirit. Any other kind of giving does not attract the blessing. And that's why giving by coercion, manipulation, or intimidation or tricks is not biblical. And when we do giving right, it provokes open heavens. And grace is released, grace is released. Upon the life of the giver that you are able to produce more. And so, I think the devil understands the power behind giving. That's why he has successfully managed to bring a lot of corruption in this thing. God is a giver. And God is a free giver. For God so loved the world that he did what? That he gave. He gave. He gave because that's his nature. Or the nature of giving. And remember because I'm going to focus on those two things, the stirred heart and the spirit that is what? That is willing. Okay? Now, in Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 4, Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 4, the Bible talks about the proud and his soul is not upright in him, but they just shall live by his faith. It says, the proud, 
His soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. The foundation of every um, uh, practice, every, everything we do as believers, it must have a foundation of faith. Faith is the foundation of everything we do. So today, in our giving, there has to be faith. There has to be faith. The Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please the Lord. And so our giving, and I don't want to go there because you can do that on your own. If you check in the book of Hebrews, the Bible says like this. It says, by faith, Abraham offered. By faith, Abraham offered. By faith, Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice. So there is behind our giving is what? Faith. Uh, behind our giving is faith. And so your giving and my giving has to be mixed with faith. And I'll explain the connection between why the heart and this attitude of faith work together to ensure that our giving becomes impactful and becomes the kind of a giving that is acceptable by God. Now, I want to give my testimony on behalf of many people's testimony here. Uh, because I know just because you're having the microphone doesn't mean you're the only one with a testimony. There are many people here who have a testimony. And I know there are people here who can, who can agree with me that giving works. How many people can say giving actually works? And um, this is what I normally say. Anybody who just gives in church is, 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 a, is a stingy person. Giving is not just done in church. For giving to impact your life, it has to become a way of life. Giving is a lifestyle. Giving is part of who we are. A real Christian is a giver naturally. I don't even have an idea who I would be today or where I would be today if I had not gotten the revelation about giving. And so, although today we are giving towards this project, uh, my focus is not really about this project, we will, but how do we, as a congregation, get our minds renewed to have a lifestyle of giving so that we understand why this thing is so powerful. And giving is one of the laws that works whether you are Christian or you are not. Is that why many intercessors are broke? I didn't say anything. Let's continue. Let's stay on course. <laughs> Christians like me. Eh? Prosperity is not a result of prayer. It's not. Uh, an unbeliever who doesn't pray, but is generous, will experience blessing. A Christian who prays, but is stingy, will struggle. You, you don't want to say amen, but you will say amen because it's the truth. <laughs> I, I'm just telling you, it's the truth. I have a brother is younger than me uh, uh, twice. Okay, one, there's one behind me and then him. And when I came in here, I was feeling very proud uh, that we are the most in our family, but that title, I just lost it. When I hear, heard there are people who are nine, I humbled myself <laughs> and I said, uh, <laughs> <clears throat> You know, these days, numbers in your family, they don't really count. Uh, you are six, doesn't it? When I was growing up, that was an advantage. I'm the fifth born. I have six other brothers. We should have been seven. I'm telling you, in my little stature, I would confront anyone. Doesn't matter how big you are. Eh? Now it's a tyranny of numbers. <laughs> because... <laughs> 
If you touch me, you touch us. Whenever any of my brothers would get involved in a fight, we would just get into the fight and fight the other person. Then after that, we ask the brother, bro, we first beat you. We beat you first. <laughs> we beat you first. <laughs> eh? Tyranny tire off. <laughs> yeah, so there are days those numbers you really used to count. I would be small, but nobody messes up with me. Because I have elder brothers. And they're going to join in. And trust me, it's going to be a real fight. You won't even be sent to the shop to buy milk. Utapitia <laughs> wapi. So I have a brother who is um, younger than me. He's not really a church person. Okay, he believes in God, but he's not. You understand what I'm saying? But he's a very generous guy. They're saying yes because they know him. Very generous. I mean, one of the most free givers I've ever known in my life. The man can give you anything, anytime. Uh, in church, he's been a blessing, supported so many of our projects. I mean, such a free giver. I have seen his life blessed. I've seen the blessing. Guy doesn't pray, doesn't attend church, but the guy is a giver. Oh, my goodness. I've seen his bless, the blessing upon his life. I can't even remember the last time I went into a shop and bought a cologne. I can't. Because for like 10 or whatever years, he's always told me, bro, you're a preacher. So my cologne, you're a cheer. So he goes anywhere, buys me very nice colognes. He gives me shirts. Guy is a giver. I've seen his life blessed. So this thing works. I know people will dispute and argue with it, but to, to see the effects of giving, you must be a, gi a giver. But there are certain things you need to have guidelines in your giving. Because this is the danger. And then I explain my points, because I see I have uh, a few minutes left. This is the danger now. In Genesis 4, where I quoted, man of God, Cain gave. Abel also but where was the problem? The Bible says that when Abel gave, God accepted. Cain gave, God did not accept. Now, churches will never tell you that. We won't tell you that God has not accepted your offering. We will receive it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Try us, we will receive it. <laughs> but I want to tell you truthfully, there are some offerings that we receive on our altar that God doesn't receive. It's, it's, a, it's a hard fact, but it's true. He doesn't receive that offering. And so somebody will bring it, but God does not receive that offering. It's very possible to be giving in the church and you're dying. You can give and die. It's in Acts chapter 5. Ananias, after giving the biggest offering, died. <laughs> he didn't die after committing adultery. That's still a sin. But the guy gave on a day like this with a project. People are selling land, selling their houses. The guy brought such a huge offering, gave and died. And his wife came an hour later because she was at the salon. She had to be, you know. <laughs> praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. And Pastor Peter looked at the woman. He said, did you? I said, your husband just gave, came and gave half a million. She said, yeah. He said, did, did you sell the plot for that much? He said, praise the Lord, Pastor, we did. Thank you for your prayers. You know how you lied to us. Amen. <laughs> and Pastor Peter said, you know, that church was not 
didn't have cabro like this. Eh? That's why they were doing an offering. Watengeneze flow. Because it was ile mchanga. Ukikanyaga, inaonekana. And the pastor Peter said, you see these footsteps? She said, yeah, I see them. He said, the feet of those that have carried your husband. And they will carry you. <sighs> she died. After giving And you know, they must have given a lot of money, isn't it? Because they had sold land. Not Mandazi. They had sold land. So definitely their giving was a lot. But they still died. Why? Because there is something about giving that is very important to God. And I want to share with you a few things that you need to keep in mind when it comes to giving and it will be a blessing in your life. Now in Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 4 the Bible says that when we do not operate by faith uh, it says his heart is not upright in him. So point number one to those that have been waiting for me to have a point Point number one. We finally got here now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Point number one. Point number one. Never forget this. <clears throat> Giving is first and foremost a matter of the heart, not of the pocket. Where God is concerned, your giving is a matter of your heart before it becomes a matter of the pocket. Because what many people fail to understand is that giving first originates from your heart, not from your pocket. And I will show you why the starting point of giving is your heart. That's why your heart must be right when it comes to giving. You know, you can give and your heart is not. You can even give and you don't want to give. Hello, you can even give and you don't like the person you're giving to. I'll give you a simple example. Maybe you're in this service and you're being kajaked. Or you've been confronted by thugs. Didn't you give? You're here because you gave. Tell, you when the neighbors, tell, tell your neighbor when the robbers came, you're here because you gave. When they put the dagger on your side, you did, or pointed a gun on you, tell your neighbor, giving saved your life. Tell them, you're here because you gave. <laughs> that day, giving saved your life. They say, give your car keys. You gave. They say, bring your wallet. You gave. They say, give your phone your phone you gave you can't give your wife your phone but you gave them <laughs> but question question did you give out of your heart you gave but it was not from the heart. Why? You are giving because you are afraid. You are giving because you are compelled. You are giving because you are coerced. You gave. And so listen, let's not just bring this thing, you know, as long as I've given. No. No, it's not as long as you've given. Giving comes from the heart. It matters to God how your heart is today when you give. That's, that's the most important thing. It matters to God. Your heart. That's why they gave, their hearts were stirred up. Now listen. The heart has a capacity to be stirred up in different ways. It can be stirred up in anger. <laughs> your heart can be stirred up. You're so furious, you're annoyed. Your heart is stirred up. But you gave. Your heart is stirred up with gratitude. Then you give. 
Amen. I said amen. amen. So giving is first and foremost a matter of the heart before it becomes a matter of the pocket. So your heart has got to be in your giving. I'll explain that. Your heart has got to be in your giving. In Proverbs 23 and verse 7, the Bible says, Don't eat the food of a stingy person. Don't eat the food of a stingy person. In Swahili, Usile chakula cha mtu ambaye ni nani? Ni mchoyo. Mtu mchoyo hapendi ku... The Bible says, as you're eating, he's saying to you, eat and drink, but his heart is not with you. Isn't this a form of giving? They have given you food, but their heart is not with you. They are counting costs. They are thinking you are eating too much. You are destroying their budget for supper. They had planned that that killer of meat they shall eat till Tuesday. You've come with your big appetite. Spoilt everything. <laughs> he said, don't eat their food. Because in as much as their hand is given, their heart is grumbling. It's not with you. In fact, the Bible says, if you continue eating that food in the next verse, it says, you shall vomit out everything. <laughs> now you remember, you know why after you visited them, you had a stomach ache. <laughs> it is the things they said after you left. <clears throat> Amen. You know, let me let me use an illustration to show you I, I to show you how giving works. Can I please have a bottle of water? Is that for the preacher? Let me use mine. Yeah. Let me show you something about giving. Thank you. Thank you, Moses. Uh, you lady, come. You. Please come. Yeah, you come. And to give you this water. That's all I wanted to do. <laughs> Amen. Can I tell you something? You people here may forget me. This lady will never forget me. <laughs> she can't. It's not possible. I'm telling you, it is not possible. Anytime she sees someone with this kind of clothes, she'll be like, no, yo. She'll, no, yo. She, can, she can't. She cannot forget me. I don't even need to, I don't need to tell her anything. She cannot forget me. Next Sunday, she'll be expecting me to be here preaching. <laughs> Next time I come, even if none of you is excited, I've come, she will be so happy. I can be saying, that preacher gave me some water. Let me tell you the power of giving because I can see my time is done. Let me tell you the power of giving. Giving is not powerful because of what you give. No. Do you know what makes giving powerful and memorable? Is what your giving makes someone feel. Giving is all about a feeling. Did you know that? It's not what you gave. You see, she's going to drink that water and it's going to get finished. In fact, it'll get finished. But the feeling, huh? all these many people, I am the one who walked there. I, you know, a moment of fame. I got the water. That feeling, that feeling, that feeling, you, you can't take it out. That feeling, you can't take it out. And I will show you in Genesis 22, we are not going there. Genesis 22, this is what made God 
swear a blessing upon Abraham. When Abraham gave, ah, God swore. God did something that he doesn't do by nature. He swore. He said in blessing, he said because you have done this, in blessing I will bless you. It touched the heart of God. He saw a blessing. He did something that is not characteristic of him. He went beyond himself. He swore. He said, in blessing, I will bless you because of this kind of a giving. He said, in multiplying, I will multiply you. Because Abraham's act of sacrificial giving touched the heart of God. In a way, he said, mm -mm -mm -mm, no, 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 you can't do this. It touched him at the core of his being. Now, let me show, show you this because you don't need to forget it. Folks, huh? a feeling. Now, this is how the law works. Circumstances will begin to work around you so that you have the same feeling. You see, what you reap out of giving is not really the thing. It is the what? The feeling. So something will happen to you that you yourself must have the same to the degree you cause to happen to someone else. I am I'm serious. I'm just telling you. I'll give you one example. One time there was a strike of the Matatus. And I was on Thicker Road. I pulled into a petrol station. And I saw a man walk to me. And uh, first, no, it was a lady. She walked to me. She said, sir, Please, we need your help. On the other side, I saw a car that had opened the bonnet. She said, we are taking our daughter to school. That's a higher taxi. Lakini mearibika. Na kama mtoto hafiki shuleni leo. Tutapoteza nini? I said, so what do you want to... She said, please. We, I don't know you, and I don't even know if I need to ask. But I said, but if, if you allow us, we can fuel your car. To fikishe tu. Yeah? Now we are on thicker road. I said, so where are you going? And this lady, I thought she was, she was not serious. She said, Tunaenda Kerogoya. <laughs> My friend, Kerogoya. <laughs> Kerogoya. Kama we uko kwa service na wenu we Kerogoya. You are very ambitious people. <laughs> My initial thought was no. Thought was no. Then I began to sense in my heart. Starting. For some reason, it's like the Lord was telling me, help her. Just, yeah, I mean, that was strange. That's why I'm saying it's a starting. Like God was telling me, help this woman. I said, my goodness. Can I go here? <laughs> But I, I just I saw the I saw the desperation on her face. No? I remembered my own mother, eh? how she struggled to take us to school. And my heart, my heart was just telling me, help her. But I do want to show it. I say, But already my heart is I'm, I'm already thinking, how do I help this lady? So I finished my business. I walked there. I found the man. The girl was there in uniform with her bag. And these guys, I talked to the taxi man. He said, hey, Gary, service. They just stood there. 
I said, Kujeni. They came to the car. <coughs> they sat inside. The man said, uh, Shikai, ungeze mafuta. I think he was giving me something like 3,000. I said, no, nimeweka tu saini sawa. I took them to Kerogoya. When we reached, and throughout they're asking me, what's your name? I said, doesn't matter. I said, they say, who are you? I said, doesn't matter. I took them to Kerogoya. Some school, I don't know, Karoti, such a school. When we reached, the man was like, please give me your number. Lazima ni kufanye kakitu. Yani was telling me so many things. Eh? Niko na kambuzi. You know, he was telling me a lot of stuff. <laughs> I said, I said, so. So they expected me to leave. I sat in the car. They said, Awendi, Malizeni. They finished. I drove them back. Mbaka Gidurai. The man was offering. Tukunulie kanyama. Ambia boswe nyamaza. He tried to give me money. I refused. They, they asked me, who are you? I said, you needed help. I've helped you. I dropped them at Gedurai. I went, I'm looking at them at the rear mirror. They're looking at me. The disciples were looking at Jesus going to heaven. <laughs> I didn't tell them my name, and I didn't ask their name. Two weeks later, I took a plane and went to the U.S. This is real stuff that happened. Because giving, if, it, if, if your giving will stir up the heart of God, God will do something that will stir up your heart. If your giving will stir up the hearts of men, God will allow things to happen around you. You will have the same feeling they had. That's the, what I'm telling you, you, you can't change it, it's like that. So two weeks later, I get into a plane, get into the U.S., then this gentleman picks me up in a very nice double cabin, Ford, double cabin, beautiful car, leather seats, it has those CDs, nanny, you know those, now you're Nikitambo, some time back. So I sit in the, in the car, and he's telling me, uh, he said, Pastor, you're blessed. I said, I said, thank you. He said, you know what, a week ago, and I just need to tell you this because it's in my heart. He said, a week ago, the Lord spoke to me about you before you came. I said, okay, so what did the Lord say? He said, God told me, when you come, I give you this car. He said, it's now yours. Whoo! Whoo! I remembered the woman and the man. Listen to this as I close. If your giving will stir the heart of God, today you do something that touches his heart circumstances will begin to come together. That's just one of the things I'm telling you. Circumstances will begin to come together. You will have the same feeling. Something will happen either at work, in your business. Something will just happen. This, this I have seen it to be true. And you can put it to, to practice. I've seen that to be true. So that you have the same. If you touch the heart of somebody in your generosity, in your giving, and they say, oh my goodness. You know that's a very serious thing for someone to say. Even some people who keep going, you trample the feelings of people. You don't care if you hurt people. No, 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 you will live here and you will go to China with your small eyes. They can't see anybody else but you, they will see you <laughs> to hurt you. They will see you, they will hurt you. Hurt you. They will see you, they will hurt you. They will see you, they will hurt you. <laughs> they will see you and they will hurt you. <laughs> My time is up, but let me give you this last testimony. Uh, Moses or Leo, come and take this. Have you gotten something? 
Have you gotten something? Now listen. Another testimony. It will encourage you. One time we had a neighbor. And then this neighbor, his sister, had died and left him with three children. The sister was a widow. And then she also died. On her dying bed, she told the man, please, take care of my children. That was her last words. So she died. So the man took the children in his house. He was my neighbor in Donholm. And then this man had applied for a green card. Then he won the green card. Then here is a problem. The green card he had applied was for him and his wife and daughter. He won. Now he has to go to the U.S. and he has three children from his sister. He doesn't know where to take them. The man went. He went even to his pastor, church members. Hey, people say three children. They are teenagers. Teenagers equals appetite. Appetite equals teenagers. <laughs> I don't know what happens to these people. <laughs> I used to say that with my daughter. She's stabilized now. At 11.30 p.m. in the night, I wake up. I find a girl with a plate. Food in my I'm like, Joy. She's like, yeah. I'm like, what is, do you know the time? Yes. They're like, where are you taking all that food? See, I will eat. <laughs> you got to say, Lord, is my daughter no more. <laughs> Those teenagers can finish a whole loaf of bread just like that. As they prepare for lunch. <laughs> That's not lunch. <laughs> so one time, I need to stop, please. <laughs> so, so one time, this gentleman came into my house. He knew I'm a pastor. He came. He said, Pastor, nimefika mwisho. Then he explained to me his frustrations and everything. He said, I need to leave. Otherwise, I will lose this opportunity for the green card. But nobody is willing to receive, to take these children. I don't know what to do. Everybody is saying no. I can't leave them in a foster home. They need to be in a family. Then he told me, please, I know this is, I don't, I don't even need to ask. But he said, but I'm desperate. He said, can you be willing to stay with my children for one year? When I get to the U.S., because I will work out a way eh, as their legal guardian and they can come. Three kids. I talked to my wife. You know, let me say this to make sense later. Everything you see about me, I've been helped. I am a product of help. You may not know details, but everything about my life, I have been helped to be where I am. So I know what it means to be desperate, and then you are helped. So I talked to my wife. my wife. My wife is a very nice person. Very nice. You know, that's how couples are. What I'm saying, if your wife is very nice, now you know who you are. You know, you know that's, that's how couples are, you know? You just know. I don't need to explain details. You just know. <laughs> so my wife said, no, it's okay. Let's just, let's just stay with them. They can't be on the street. We took the three kids. I became their legal guardian. I would take them to school, buy them food, everything. I became their father for one year. Then their, their uncle worked out everything. They joined him in there. Immediately they went. God did something in our life that for eight years, immediately they left. For eight years, I never paid fees for my children for eight years. I never bought a book. I never bought a pencil. I never bought uniform for eight years. My kids went to one of the best schools in, in this nation, I think. And for eight years, I never paid even rubber. Everything was paid for. I know what you're thinking. Is that man who was paying? No, 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 no. No, no, no. God doesn't work like that. God, God orchestrated another means that our children got favor 
And for eight years, I never paid fees. That's how this thing works. That's why I told you, I want to sound a warning. And this is, this is serious. Stop hurting people. You're hurting yourself. Don't hurt people. People don't have to fight you back. Nature will fight you back. I'm telling you, things will fight you back. Don't hurt people. Don't take advantage of people. Don't use people. Eh? Don't hurt people and you you know, you think, you think because they never fought back, they are foolish. No. There are things that will begin to work randomly. Eh? And the feeling you caused people to feel, you'll feel it. Because giving stars hearts. Now, if the heart of God, today we give. If you will touch God, angalia namna he. God said, I mean, I know you. I know your capacity. This is what you are doing for my work. And God's heart is stirred with that kind of sacrifice. Then what he did to Abraham becomes your portion. He said in blessing, I will bless you. In multiplying, I will multiply you. In Jesus' precious name. Somebody say amen. amen. God bless you.